morning, everybody. Well, we are um, the last day of April here, and I got all my breakdowns fixed with my skid steer and my sawmill, and we're in the sawmill now. And we've been sawing some um, different size camps, um, six by sixes, six by eights for a for an order, and we need to put it in packs and pick it up with a skid steer. And yesterday I had a pack. I had over 700 feet in it and I could hardly handle it with my skid steer and today I just did this pack up and realized I got too much on this pack. So we can take a couple of these off and then we're going to edge this wood right here and we're, it's, there's cans going, there's two inch wood going so we got to put another pack together for that. Brenda's going to help me today and we're going to edge this stuff up quick and then we have a bunch of other things to do today. Well, we got the lumber edged up and if you saw our last video we made a raised bed on one side of the garden and here we're going to make one on the other side in between there's i hope to have a walkway and maybe i'm going to put some stone in there um, but i'm excited to have these two raised beds so that i can get into my garden earlier in the spring we've got some more tamarack, two by six, two by sixes, and yeah. they're 16 feet long. And then we just cut up another two by six, four feet, three feet wide, to make it three feet wide. And um, we're just putting braces in the corners to keep it all together. Jim's gonna get some barnyard dirt afterwards, just like he did on the other side. And we'll get it planted, and I'm really excited. So we're finishing up here. What I'm doing is uh, marking four inches above the two by six and Jim's going to cut them off so that if we do want to make this higher, we can. But I think this is going to be fine, especially since we have good garden soil underneath it. Um, and the hope is that when it's wet in the spring, I can use some of this bed to plant before I could get into my garden. Woo! I'm not holding on to you today. Woo! Yikes! We're out for another surfing adventure. Bill's feeling pretty good this morning. 
but we're gonna go pick some stones so you may settle down pretty good. Look, we got some water here to surf through. Yeah, we're not doing that. No, because I don't want to have to clean all that mud off of Billy. Does he have to run right now or are you just, is, like, is this the pace he wants to go? This is the pace he wants to go. See, he's settling down here already, even he's walking now. But he just, that first little burst of energy, he likes to go fast. So I'm hoping to get a few stones picked in our ditch over here and then I'm hoping to actually start plowing. This is the, oh, this is the very center of the field and it is not too bad right here. There's plenty of wet spots, but I'm going to start plowing this afternoon. After lunch, we'll hitch three horses up and we'll see what we can do. So here's the ditch I made a few weeks ago and uh, we just had a few stones to pick where we're going right here now because I want to herald this up a little bit more so I can mow it easily. Mmm, flat stones. Hey, we could leave flat stones on here. I'm always looking for them. <laughs> How little do you want to go? Yeah, it just depends. Throw them over there. Bunch underneath the slabs. Yes. Jim's going to wear me out before lunch. When they say stone boat, which this is, is this what the original, what it was originally made for? When they say stone, put stones on, like this, is what it was originally sure. made for and called, called this for. When everybody used to do this. Who had stones in their field, which we do. I had debated about just coming out here and throwing the stones across my ditch. And that's why I'm actually doing some of it that way. But it's just far enough along, far enough distance, I decided I might use the stone boat. Bill needed the extra work, so I figured great job for him to do anyways. I really don't want to have more than one load. So this is actually the worst part that we're already done. And the rest of it's not so bad. And a lot of them from here on in will actually throw over the ditch so that we don't have more than he can handle on the stone boat. But we will continue down through and try and get him cleaned up. I'm hoping Brenda won't find any more flat stones that she thinks she's gonna haul on home with her so that Bill doesn't have that extra work. But Brenda's a meanie, she doesn't mind working I knew, Bill. I knew he was gonna say that so I wouldn't wanna put more stones on. This might seem like a heavy load for Bill. Actually, we're not on here, so, you know, I don't know how much this weighs, but anyways. And I am throwing some little ones across to e equal out the, 
the flat stones I'm putting on here. But um, last year, if you remember last summer, we went to a single horse pull with Bill and he pull, pulled by himself almost 10,000 pounds. But of course, this is longer, but this is not 10,000 pounds, I'll tell you that. Right here, well, we can't, we won't weigh it, but what's your guess, guys, of how much you think this weighs right here? Be interesting, what's your guess? I would say it's about as much as Brenda weighs. Ha ha, but I'm gonna, we'll tell you at the end what Jim thought it weighed and see if you- Told him what I thought it weighed. That's not funny. Um, I have no idea. You have no idea? Not much. He won't, he won't, he won't gander a guess, but maybe you guys will. Well, now the job's done. We got all the stones on and or thrown over the, di the ditch. And now we'll just take Bill down to our little stone pile down closer to the barn. Um, I turned off the fencer and we opened it up there so we could get closer to the stone pile. beauties. Okay, that job's all done. Brenda's got a few flat stones she wants to keep. But since we're right here close to the stone pile, just want to show you a couple things. Well, there's really nothing to show, just to tell you a couple things. Um, we have had, over the years, quite a few horses and obviously uh, when you have a lot of horses and keep for a long period of time, they eventually die. And so um, I have um, several horses buried right in this area here. And I have right over here, um, actually right over there where those, where those stones are. Um, Nick is buried there. Um, he had some leg problems. He, had, he was fairly old, um, but we had to put him down and that's where he lay. Over beyond is my Mac horse, and uh, he was a great horse. And then out about in the center of this little piece was another, Brenda's taking a hat off to show respect, I guess. <laughs> out in the other, the other center of this field anyways, um, there was another buck horse that we had, a Belgian, and he was buried out there. And I'm sure there's others buried elsewhere on the farm, but when you've been here for 30 years is it's a little bit hard to remember all of them and where you buried them but uh, um, yeah that's that's what happens sometimes with our horses when they die we got to do something with them anyways let's go see about starting the cornfield with plowing careful ah ah oop, ah oh so like I said in the first part of the video it's April 30th and last day of April. And I don't think there's been a year, Hobak, that I have not plowed in April. Of the last 30 years we've been up here, I think I've always plowed in April. And this year I was hoping to plow last fall, it was too wet, and then so far this spring it's been too wet, I haven't even plowed at all. So this is gonna be my first time out, and it is still a little wet. I'm just itching to do it so much, I'm gonna get going. I might only be able to go up, make two passes, but it'll get my opening passes done. Now, for somebody plowing with horses, even if they're plowing for a tractor, one of the most one of the most crucial things in plowing is that very start, that first furrow up and back in the field. It's so important to make that as straight as you possibly can. As you can see down through here, I have actually set fence posts to help me to stay somewhat straight. Now, I know 
it's not perfect. And I'm telling you, if you think you want a perfect plowing job, and you should strive for that. But if you think you have to have a perfect plowing job, you're in the wrong business. You'll just have nothing but trouble and hardships in your life. I'm telling you, if you just strive to be perfect, but don't expect and, and have to, you know, feel that you have to be perfect. Um, half the time, my my job is crooked as can be the other half of the time it's not straight so um I, I am not a perfection in any shape or form but i still i strive for it um so i'm going to start out and i'm going to plow down this way and roll my throw my furrow towards the right hand side towards buck that's buck right there this is can and that is lady so i'm going to roll it that way i'm going to turn around when i get the end pull the string here and the plow will pop back up I'm going to turn around and attempt to come back down on the other side and roll this next furrow back into this furrow I just plowed. So that's actually the harder part, harder than going up. Um, now what I, what I do as I go up through, I'm, I'm eyeing my fence post. I want Buck to walk as close to that fence post as he can, but I'm also kind of eyeing, eyeing the end of my field. You know, that's what you have to do when you're plowing. If you don't have, you need something to look for something to shoot for to try and get that straight furrow if you start turning around and uh, looking back at what you've already done you're almost always going to go crooked so important just stay focused on what's ahead and that's the way it is in so many things in life you have to stay focused on what's ahead i'm um, today we're going to see what we can do and uh, i'm going to just talk as i go along if if i can most of the time i'm so focused i can't even talk I can't stop. Plowing. I'm just like I said, focusing straight ahead. But oh, I so much want to turn around and see how things are going, but I'm not going to. I'm going to stay straight, focus on those fence posts. After I get my furrow, first furrow done, then I can turn around and watch behind all I want. If my corn, if my corn planting from last year was perfect, I could just stay right on a corn row and go right up through, but I am sure that was not the case either. The rows were perfect. I see I'm farther from that front post than I'd like to be. Does that mean I'm crooked? Oh, I don't know. No guarantee I put the fence post in right either. So we'll... We'll tell when we get to the end. So when I get to the end of this particular plow, all I have to do is pull this string and the plow will come right up. At least it's supposed to. Jeep, 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 jeep. Okay, now. I'm going to have to make a big, wide circle to get myself situated back in there again. Gee, over there. If I was, you know, this with the the end of the rows, if I want to get right to the end. Gee, over there. Oop, gee. That's what I have to do. Gee, 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 gee. A little tricky, but after a couple rounds, you don't have to do this. You can, it'll work fine. Ah. Uh, Oh, Brenda, can you move that fence post for me? Yep. As I go down through, all the fence posts will have to be moved. 
Step up. Ha. Ha. Step up. Cap cap. Cap cap. Ha. Ha. Step up. Ha. 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 Oh. Okay, like I said, this is one of the, the hardest jobs in plowing, getting this first wind, this, this first furrow down. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is, is just come back here and clean my, my plow off. Some of the corn stalks got in here, which is no big deal, but I, wanna, I don't want it there to start this furrow because I'm really trying to make a good first furrow. Now, another thing that's so important is your, your plow needs to scour. Now, scour just means that it, it comes off the mold board nicely. And if it sits for a long time and it isn't greased or painted, it will a lot of times have troubles. I haven't used this plow for about three or four years now, I guess, and but I had put a lot of grease on it when I used it last. So actually for the first path through, it scoured pretty good. There's some dirt here, but not a lot. And after a few passes, hopefully this mold board will shine right up really nice. Um, so, my plow, first furrow, is not as crooked as a snake, but it's far from perfect, but I am perfectly happy with this. Now, the trick to the next part of this plowing job is to keep Buck walking right about here. Now, Buck is my furrow horse. He's been my furrow horse for years. He is going to so much want to step into the furrow. So it's a challenge that first pass when I'm plowing this way to keep him over here. Um, it's not that terribly hard to do, but he still, he wants to jump into this furrow. So hopefully I can keep him in this furrow. And when I go down this pass here, I have the potential of attempting to straighten that up a little bit. Um, and I'm probably, there's a very good chance that I'm still gonna have some um, trash showing between these furrows. Um, I don't want a huge, huge mound here. I don't want this whole other furrow brought up on top of here. I just want to kind of end it so it ends right there. That way it's easier to smooth out. But I would like, if possible, to cover up as much trash as possible. So we'll give it a shot. Get a little bit. Cut step. Oh. Oh. These plows are great. Uh, I think I told you on my last video or when we were hitching up, I used to have a, a, a wheel on the back of that plow and that actually helped, kept more weight there. One problem with this plow, and as I get going, I can adjust it and it won't be so much an issue, but it's not balanced right. So you'll see this is actually flopped ahead like this. I had pulled it to kick it into gear and for some reason it didn't, but a lot of times when they sit around for long times, um, and you mechanical people know what I'm talking about, the dogs inside that wheel gets kind of gummed up and they don't always work properly until they're used a little bit. So I'm going to swing around and get started again and uh, we'll see what we can do. Huh? Huh? Oh. Okay, so now we get the plow down and we're ready to try again. It cups up. Cup up. Oh! Next up, G. 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 Step. G. 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 Ha. 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 Careful. Ah, back ah, ah, there. Oh, what are you doing? Careful. 
Yeah. Yeah. I like this end of the field because I have the field itself to, to turn in. I don't have a fence there that stops me from turning. G over here. G, G, G. But I do need to turn pretty sharp. Sometimes I go past my furrows like this. Pa, oop, pa, oop, pa. Ha, 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 ha. Lady, ha, 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 ha. Careful, ha. Oh. There. As I look up through, I'm not very happy with my plowing job, but maybe I can straighten it up a little bit as we go along. But now, Buck can stay in the furrow, which is what he likes to do, and everything stays more uniform if we do that. Um, a lot of times with plowing, if you just keep going back and forth, it's amazing how it will actually straighten, a furrow will somewhat straighten up itself. Um, somewhat, I say, because every time you go through, if they stay, horses kind of stay straight in that furrow, it just tends to straighten up a little bit. So as I'm looking at from my, from my seat here, you can see it's not that straight. Last year I had some other plowing jobs that was, I was pretty pleased with, um, and I had used my other, my newer plow, which really had nothing to do with the straightness of the rows. But, uh, um, this is not my very best but that's okay i just wanted to show you that because even though i showed you some really nice straight furrows last year once again if you think you got to be perfect plowing you've got some disappointments ahead of you So I think I'm gonna call it quits for today when I get back down through. Um, up here, it's not that bad. Down the lower part, it's, like, it's pretty wet. And you know, it's not that I can't do it. We're doing it without a problem at all. It is harder on the horses because they're sinking into the mud somewhat. But there's other issues with plowing ground that's too wet. Um, when this, if you plow much in this wet ground like this, especially with, we've got quite a bit of clay in our soil, it will actually, when it dries, it'll ball right up and just, it never smooths out really nicely until you get plenty of rain to soften it back up again. And so um, I, I'm, I'm going to quit um, for today. I'm still really pleased with what I got, even these two furrows, 
because it's a good start. It'll allow me to come back in, um, you know, next week. Uh, it's supposed to be nice again tomorrow, Sunday, and then um, maybe even on Monday I can come right in and do a lot of plowing. And uh, I want to talk more about this plowing and my other plow. This is a very easy plow actually to, to operate after a few more furrows, especially. Oh, gee, 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 gee. Hip, G, G, hip, G, hip, back, back, G, 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 chica, G, G, hip, ho, ho. I am trying to jackknife this plow tremendously to get back into that furrow, and I gotta be careful that I don't grab it and flip it over. But if I can really turn them sharp here, then I'm good to go. And every time it gets wider and wider, it's so much easier to turn. Um, the problem about plowing this way, one problem is when I get farther and farther, you got to walk away on the headlands before you're actually plowing. You're not plowing a lot. You, I mean, you're doing a lot of walking on ends, but that's just the way, that's the way it is for plowing. Anyways, this plow is a really easy plow to operate, especially with, with Buck in that furrow. He's so good. Um, so I'm hoping even to, to have Brenda try her hand at plowing some, and maybe, maybe even the girls would be willing to come up and try some plowing. So anyways, I'm going to swing around, grab that furrow, and head on down through, and um, we'll see how it goes. G, hoop, G, 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 capital. G, hoop, G, 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 hoop, G, 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 hoop. Step high, step high, step high, hoop. Ha, ha, hoop, ha, ha, hoop, ha. Ha, 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 ho. Hope. All right. Okay, as, as you might have seen, I don't know, I really jackknifed it and the tires were actually sliding here. I don't know if you saw that, but it, it didn't flip it over so good. But I had to go way past and into the plow ground to be able to swing back here and end up with the plow in the furrow, which is, is just what I got, which is good. So I'm gonna pull it now and you can see it dropped down in place and we're good to go. I have plowed with this plow hundreds of acres because I've plowed with this plow for 30 years or almost. And you just don't have to worry about it's the way it's set up. The plow just stay, the, the tire stays in the furrow and it's just basically not an issue. It's really nice plow and plow. So um, let's go down there one more pass. I want to show you the wet holes that we're dealing with down the lower part of the field and then we're going to quit. And cut stuff. So often, by this time, my, my plowing is actually all done because I had done it last fall or I was able to get started earlier in April, long before the bugs are out. And right now it's even quite a warm day. I gotta shed some clothes because I thought it'd be a little bit cooler out in the field here with the wind, but it's just really warming up nice. And uh, I noticed the black flies are already out pretty good, bug bugging the horses. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to deal with that because we've got quite a lot of plowing to do. Brenda, could you show them the wet holes in this field? There's one of them, and that's a, a bad one, of course. And there's a few others here, but uh, like I said, I could plow right through them, but there's enough other issues with plowing and wet ground. I'm going to say, call it good for now. Mm. It's too bad because the horses are working really good today. They usually do, but it's just such a beautiful day. I'd love to stay right out here plowing. Maybe you can get some shots of even where the horses are sinking into the mud as we're coming up through here. As you can see, it's not quite ready to be flowered.
so I have that one bad crooked spot see up a little ways um, probably from the mud kind of got sucked in there but uh, we can still possibly fix that up a little bit more and uh, so I'm gonna call it quits it's so early afternoon I am gonna maybe do a little bit of sawing and we shall see you next time have a great day don't forget to subscribe and I do want to thank everybody for for su subscribing uh, I see that we've made our 50,000 and that's a wonderful thing so thank you so much for that and uh, have a great day.